Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Verified. I'm your host, Chaplin Pileggi, and I'm joined again by my crew. I've got Donovan, Natalie, we've got Jill, and the professor. Yes, yes, yes <laughs> Keelan. So, we are going to be discussing a new topic today. Last month, we were looking at the complimentary Sabbath school lesson, Social Justice in the Word of God. But we've moved past that, and now we're going to be dealing with topics that our students have selected. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you all for your contributions, your, um, your suggestions. We picked one, and we're going to get right into it today. Now, the way I want to start is just by having a discussion, all right? And this is a topic that came up, I want to say, in our first or second episode mm -hmm. yeah. when somebody brought up church hurt. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that was the first time I ever heard that topic before or that term, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that it may have been the first time for a lot of our viewers as mm -hmm. well. And so let's talk about that because it's obviously something that resonates yeah. with uh, young adults in our church, but I never really heard it before you brought it up. So for the sake of our audience and to enlighten me a little bit, what exactly is church hurt? So I don't know who wants to kick us off, but <laughs> you know, Let's just chime in. What is church hurt? Uh, you're uh, sure. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Um, I think I think church hurt, as simply as I can put it, is an abuse of power by either um, someone who is held in high regard in the church, a well-respected you know church member, or even uh, a member of the clergy or the religious leadership mm. um, of a church or some sort of religious institution. Um, it, it, it's an experience that leaves someone feeling um, um, emotionally harmed mm. um, it, and it allows them to not be able to see God's character and then they begin to conflate the hurt that they experienced with who God is, especially mm. for someone who and church hurt is a broad spectrum because you have people who've been in the church and they know who God is and they still experience church hurt. So it's like they have to go through this cycle. And then you have people who are just going into the church for the first time and they experience it. And it's just like game over for them from the beginning. Mm. Um, but it's something that I know many people in our age group can can relate to. And it, it really spans uh, across across the population. So yeah, mm. that's, that's my take. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Donovan. And I mean, before Donovan started to say something, Nat, it looks like you had something to say. <laughs> yes, yes, I yeah. did. I did. Yeah. Okay, I thought yeah, you were going to yeah. say something. <laughs> jump in, jump uh, in. No, yeah. So for me, when I, anytime I think about the, that phrase, church hurt, I always put it in simple terms as this, that, you know, for everybody to understand. Mm -hmm. Pain that happened within the church mm. from peers clergy members or even you know people that are like for example the pastor mm -hmm. so it's pretty much like in my eyes or in my opinion I just feel as though that you know church hurt is anything that takes place inside the church that a you know pretty much cause someone to want to leave the church mm -hmm. or you know feel rejected by the church yeah. so I yes feel, yeah and it sounds like you know the implication being I don't expect to get hurt at church mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm hearing in both of your answers. Mm -hmm. Let's come on this side. I know, <laughs> I know, y'all have a little something you can add to our, our discussion, um, our definition of church hurt. In layman's term, I think church hurt, or I I define church hurt as religious PTSD. Mm. I think that's just we all know what Sheesh. PTSD is mm -hmm. and. We all know what religious is, so just I, I characterize it as religious PTSD. Mm. Um, and I like that you said, you know, you expect to not get hurt because at the end of the day, you're there for healing mm -hmm. and you're there to build and connect. And if pain is on one spectrum mm. or one side, you're kind of expected to be all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So I would say just, um, just religious PTSD. Mm. PTSD, that's a good one. I mean, that helps to break it down. And for those who may not be familiar with that term, post-traumatic stress syndrome is basically a response um, and not even, you know, a one-time response, but it's, you know, the way that I end up responding to some trauma that I went through, not in just a moment, but it could affect me until I receive healing from it. Mm. And so that's that post-traumatic stress. So we have the trauma and then there's stress that follows it. And if we don't get healing from it, it just keeps 
it keeps going. That's true. Professor, any, <laughs> anything you want to add? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think all of them gave great definitions as it relates to what church hurt is. Um, to add on to that, the church should never be a place where people come to get hurt, mm. uh, but it should always be a place for healing. Um, if we believe that God is there, you know, we should never make church this place where he's now gone mm. mm -hmm. and, and are hurting people. And so to anybody who may have experienced some form of church hurt, I publicly apologize to you mm. um, that you've had to experience or go through that and that it is very unacceptable. And do know that if you have experienced that, that I am praying for and with you always. Mm. Mm. Amen. So Amen. Man. Go um, ahead, Natalie. Yeah, something else I wanted to add on was uh, that how we should view church is like a hospital. Mm -hmm. When you go to the hospital, you're, not, you're going to get healed. You're going to get better. Um, just imagine you go into the hospital and then you get worse than you actually yeah. did yeah. when you know when you first went in. Mm -hmm. So that's how I view the church because the church is supposed to be a hospital. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where you're supposed to go, receive healing, receive comfort, receive all the help that you need wow. with you, the people that are around you. Exactly what Donovan said, love as well. That's the mm -hmm. most important one. So it's just like people are going in expecting to get healed, expecting to get well, expecting to get better, but then they come out worse than they actually go in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, now, as young as I may look, <laughs> I'm a little older, right? Um, so I'm sharing this because, you know, I've had a few different experiences in my life, and one of the experiences that I had which I'll never forget, mm. is that for a period of time in my life, I went to a 12-step group. Don't judge me. I'm just being honest, okay? It's real. Yeah, you know, so I went to this group, but can I say that I've never experienced such genuine fellowship mm. in that group mm. as I have before, mm -hmm. you know, or, or after, honestly? Um, because... We went in there, and we all had a common struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, as Christians, don't we all have a common yes. struggle? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We went in there, had a common struggle. Now, none of the other members of the group, you know, these were folk that if I were to have seen them out on the street, mm. um, they wouldn't have been part of my friend circle. I'm not being judgy, but mm -hmm. it's just like we were in different uh, places in life mm -hmm. and different we were varying in age groups and culture so these weren't normally people that I would hang out with on a regular right. you know what I'm saying I, don't, I wouldn't know where to go meet them but we met here and because we all had the same common struggle mm -hmm. I would have hung out with them outside of the group mm -hmm. you know just because we had that bond mm -hmm. and it was that one thing that kind of drew us together mm -hmm. and it's it, it was refreshing honestly I used to look forward to going to that group every week yeah. and it's not like the service that we had, it wasn't even a service, but it's mm -hmm. not like the meeting that we had was mm -hmm. bomb. We didn't have food and popcorn. We weren't watching stuff or doing anything that was entertaining. Mm -hmm. We were just sharing our struggles and trying to get past it. And that alone is what bonded us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So anyways, I want to move on to the next question with that thought in mind. Um, that we don't necessarily see that as one of the vibes that I'm getting mm -hmm. from, from your responses yes. so far. We don't really see it. And sometimes the opposite of what should happen ends up happening. Yeah. So I guess my next question is, why? Why does it happen? Um, why do you think church hurt happens? And as you're thinking about a response, you know, this is a show, <laughs> Verified. Um, <laughs> so I want to look at a passage of scripture to inform our conversation. So we were just getting into the topic but I really want to look at the word so that we know um, we have a basis to work off of. And today I want us to look at uh, Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 10. Jesus is commenting on the parable of the sower. Now, I need you guys to be thinking. OK, mm -hmm. remember the question, right? I got you mm -hmm. thinking. All right. <laughs> and the disciples came up and said to him, to Jesus, that is, why do you speak to them in parables? This is, again, right after he talked about the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. 
but whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see, and while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You shall keep on listening, but shall not understand. And you shall keep on looking, but shall not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and return and I would heal them. Mm -hmm. I would heal them. Mm -hmm. So I want to jump into this next question. But right before we do, we want to take a quick break. So we'll be back with you in one second and we'll continue our conversation. I came to Oakwood University following the call of God. And my passion is to help uh, people connect with God. I just want to be here for those moments, available for God, a tool for Him for such a time as this. So that's why I'm here at Oakwood University. Yo, what's up? It's your boy E.T. and you're watching OUBN. All right, so we're looking at the question, why does church hurt happen? And we just looked over a passage of scripture, which we're going to delve into a little bit. But um, for now, I just want to start to hear some responses. So I know, Jill, <laughs> I, want, I know you have something to say. Something was brewing um, mm -hmm. as you were listening. So why do you think it happens? Um, well, <laughs> I really love what you said, and I think it goes great with my thought. And I think that sometimes we're so passionate about God, which I love, and we're so passionate about religion and so passionate yeah. about praising Him that your love and your want to do something and do it with others turns into a form of bullying mm -hmm. because we're, we care Sheesh. so much. And, and God is not telling us to, hey, back off and let them worry about their salvation, but He's telling us to find our medium, mm -hmm. you know? Ask somebody if they want to do something, but if they don't, don't condemn them and say, well, you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for God. Mm. Like, and I think that's the biggest yeah. phrase I hear <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that, you know, is, is a form of bullying because then, oh, because I don't want to do it, then, you know, I don't want to serve God and mm -hmm. I don't want to this. Mm -hmm. And it may not look like bullying because we're not in school shoving somebody into a locker, but we're, we're shoving them away from the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is that as Adventists, you know, we care so much and we want to make this thing great and we really do want to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. but we don't know when to sometimes take our foot off that gas pedal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think mm -hmm. in your text, um, I wish I brought my Bible with me, but you know, they see, but they don't you see. You got your phone. Uh, <laughs> technology, you know. <laughs> but um, they see, but they don't see. Mm -hmm. They hear, but they don't hear. And I think we love and we serve but if we're pushing people away, we're not loving and we're not serving. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that just Matthew, that text is just very, very timely and it fits perfectly. Yeah, I see you. Go ahead. You're itching, <laughs> You're itching. I want to add on to what she said. Uh, I think about the people in Genesis 11, mm -hmm. uh, the Tower of Babel. The Bible records, if you read the King James Version, that they basically that wanted head? to make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and we see a lot of people in the church, um, the Adventist church, uh, they've, they've been serving in their different platforms 20 and 30 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at this point in their life, it's all about making a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times mm -hmm. when we do those things, uh, young people our age, when it's time for us to come about in the church, we have no place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we don't have no place is because things are done in this traditional manner, which nobody wants to switch up. Mm. And it causes us to not have uh, what some people would say love or respect mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for, uh, for others. And so what we've done, we've removed God now mm -hmm. and we've put ourself mm -hmm. up front. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's wow. true. Wow, yeah. wow. So why does it happen? I'm hearing two things. First, I heard 
from Jill's because sometimes, you know, we just really go hard for the wrong thing. We just need yes. to slow down, you know, and, and, and give people an opportunity to learn, to grow. Yeah. You know, and then I'm also hearing that we're putting ourselves front and center mm -hmm. instead of focusing on really what's most important. Yeah. Nat, I see you. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I yes, got something. Yes, I do. I do. I. It's a lot of thoughts that are brewing. So um, something that I want to point out is that hurt people hurt people. So it's like if the church people are being hurt, the people that are you know in power, I guess, um, if they're if they're in those positions, so on and so forth. Of course, if they receive hurt, they're gonna hurt. And that ties into them putting religion over people. Mm. And that is where majority of the hurt comes from. Because they're saying, do not do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. And then when they finally see somebody doing the, the very thing that they say not to do, it's like, no, you can't. No. So, like, for example, um, I grew up Caribbean in the Caribbean church. And if you didn't go up on the stage with a tie, you can't, like, you, you yep. cannot go up on the stage without a tie. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's for the gentlemen. Now, for the ladies, <laughs> you can't go up on the stage if you don't got um, a long enough skirt. Right. Um, you can't go up on the stage if you don't got weave. I mean, if you have weave in your head. Mm -hmm. You can't go up on the stage if you have makeup. All of these things that are taking place. You can't go on stage if you have your nails done. Like mm. if you have fake nails. It's all of these things that have take, took, took place. And it's like you don't know what God has in, like, ingrained in them or put in them to say to, your, to, to, say to his people. So mm. it's just like you're taking someone off the stage mainly because their nails are done. Mainly because they have weave in their head. Mainly because their, their skirt is not one inch longer than yours. Mm -hmm. So it's just like. All of these things, it's, it's like they put religion over mm. people. Yes. Yeah. And that's, mm. that's, yeah, that's, mm. that's yeah. sad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Yeah, no, I, I think a story that comes to my mind, you know, this is verified, so we want to stay, stay <laughs> uh, <laughs> scripture-oriented, is Luke 6, when Jesus is walking through the cornfields with the disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the Sabbath, and they're picking corn, something that the Pharisees and keepers of the law think that you should do on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So they start to question Jesus and like, what, what, what are you doing? Like you're mm -hmm, picking mm -hmm. corn on the Sabbath, you shouldn't be doing this. And Jesus mm -hmm. is like, yo, they're hungry. Um, and for whatever reason, the Pharisees aren't able to see that there is a need that needs to be met. And so they end up breaking the law to feed themselves. But Jesus tries to explain to them that, yo, they have a need. Uh, why is it that they're not able to meet this need because it's the Sabbath? And so like the Pharisees become so infatuated with keeping the law that they mm, ignore relationships. Mm -hmm. So as Nat and everyone has said, we, we, we tend to focus more on religion more than relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that focus is hinged upon the fact that we think we'll, you know, we receive some kind of reward for following the law. or We think that's what's going to get us to heaven. But we know the Bible says works are not uh, works are not. Nobody can, right, right. Saved by works. Yeah. nobody can be saved I by works. Nobody can be saved by works. Nobody can be saved by works. I think that's so. such a good point. And I mm -hmm. love that you two brought that up because a story that came to mind, and as I think about what um, Nat was saying with the whole nails and the, and the skirts and, and the tie, and I remember there was um, someone in my church and he didn't have much, mm -hmm. but he, he did have God and mm -hmm. he loved to praise God. And they, he, they put him on the pulpit, but mm -hmm. when he came to church that day, they're like, that's what you wear? Right. Mm -hmm. And you're next, you know, you can't. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all he had. And I think a big part of church hurt is for the younger parts, because hurt people hurt people, mm -hmm. is a lack of education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. growing up as an Adventist, we don't eat pork. I never knew why. I just knew we didn't. Mm -hmm. Right. There's just lack of education, right. period. And I think sometimes we become so obsessed with the attire and the appearance. Sometimes that's really all they had. Mm -hmm. and they, but they had their hearts for God. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to serve. And they mm -hmm. wanted to do A, B, and C. And we shun them away. And I think about how even in biblical times, it was like, Jesus, why are you talking to her? Why are you mm. talking to them? They're low lives and you're popular and you're mm -hmm. so much higher. Mm. And um, we talked about this last month with um, the, the Bible study lesson where it's like, well, she's, she's washing my feet, mm -hmm. you know, with her tears. Mm -hmm. She saved up all this oil that she could have sold for more money. Mm -hmm. But she she loved me and she cared enough for me. And I'm in your house and you didn't even offer me anything, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah. in, in here and you're worried about literally 
th this is not your business. It's not mm. your concern mm. because she cares for me enough to do A, B, and C. And I think that sometimes we become those people who are like, why are you doing this? Why are you A, B, and C? Why is yeah. this? And why can't you get a longer skirt? Why do you, why are you getting your nails done? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when it's, it's a lack of education because in turn, Jesus looks at our heart and I don't think we're looking at those people. Mm -hmm. It's never a thank you for being so willing to serve. Cause then y'all need the help. Right. Y'all are yeah. forcing me to do right. that. Like, but yeah, you're, you're shunning me away, you right. know? And I, just listening to you too, I, I thought about that story because I think that as we get closer to church hurt and the topic and the core of church hurt and just in a sense bullying people, mm -hmm. I think we forget to look at their heart and mm -hmm. look at their willingness. And you know, I'm a social work major, so we always have the strength perspective. Like mm -hmm. every client has a strength, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we look at those strengths mm -hmm. and we're just so quick to draw up that right. list. You know? Yeah, right. look, look for their redeeming qualities, right? Yes, yes. Now, I mean, while you were talking, there's something that, I mean, what you were saying was so good, so don't misunderstand me, but there was something <laughs> that you said that made me laugh, and it's not that it wasn't good, because everything was good, so stick <laughs> with me, stick with me. But when you said, when you said, um, you know, I never knew why we didn't eat pork, we just didn't eat it. I heard Nat on my side say, mmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> So I was just like, man, this girl yeah. wants some bacon. <laughs> I mean, some she was just like, why can't I have some bacon? Like, I'm tired of strippers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a, on a more serious note, when we're talking about why it happens, I think everybody has pretty much said it. And, and it. and it goes back to the text. Notice what Jesus said. He said, seeing they do not see, they do not perceive. Mm -hmm. What did he say about what had become dull in these people? Do you remember what he said? What part of them had become dull? Their heart. Yes, <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. Now, when hurt happens, where does it usually affect us? Our heart. Our heart yeah. slash mind. Right? And when you keep in mind that he's saying this after the parable of the sower, you know, the seed representing the word, mm -hmm. and only one out of the four groups actually receives the word, mm -hmm. then he's talking about the heart. So this different type of soil, what do you think it represents? the different kinds of soil. Where is the seed supposed to get into? The, per the people? The <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give you your a hint. Heart? Hey, your heart? Hey, your heart. Your heart. Your heart. <laughs> right? And then once it hits the heart, then that's where it can grow and bear fruit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then at the end, he says, because they don't see me, because they don't hear me, they don't turn to me. Mm -hmm. And if they would, then I would what? Do you remember? He said, I would heal them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They will become healed. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. what I got you word for word. Right? <laughs> They'll come healed. So they will become healed. Yes. So that's why it happens. It's because like you said, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And and even though I could be hearing the word week after week, mm -hmm. if I'm not taking that intimate time with Jesus, because mm -hmm. this is in part of the explanation of the passage. Right. Because the disciples didn't really understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So they followed up with him mm -hmm. and said, hey, break it down to us because mm -hmm. we don't understand. Mm -hmm. How many of us spend that time doing that? Mm -hmm. Or how many of us come to work, I mean, to, to church once a week mm -hmm. and expect that one experience to address my hurt? Mm -hmm. You see, I have hurt that needs <laughs> to be addressed that Jesus wants to address one on one. And until until we allow him to deal with us one-on-one, -on -one, then the, the hurt will continue and yes. hurt people will continue to hurt other people. Yes. So I, I really want to be able to continue this discussion, but we kind of, we got we to gotta land <laughs> yeah. the plane. We got to land the plane because our time is up, but we'll come back. We'll okay. come back to it. We want to thank you so much for checking into Verified. We addressed the topic today. We looked at the scripture. We hope it was a blessing to you. Please feel free to jump in the, the comments, drop us some messages. If you have some questions, we'll take a look at it and we might even come back in a following episode and comment on what you said or answer any questions that you might have. Again, thank you for tuning in live from Oakwood University to another episode of Verified. I'm your host, Chap. This is the crew and we'll see you on next week. God bless.